In this program, we're going to finally uh, start working with random numbers, and this can make our programs interesting in a whole bunch of different ways, especially because I like using games as an example for programming. Uh, we can make our, our um, programs a little more interesting. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, how we're going to construct random numbers in C++ and also go over a little bit how random numbers actually work. So in your program called random num, we're going to start with a, an integer n. Um, and then what I want to do is uh, we're going to make n become equal to a random number. So uh, this is how this works. n is going to be a random number. We use uh, R-A-N-D and then open close parentheses to activate the random number function. Uh, and then let's uh, output C out N and L uh, to see what we're actually getting here. So run your program and we'll see what the random number function gives us. So uh, I just got the number one eight zero four two eight nine three eight three. Now, what I want to do is I want to generate a random number from one to ten. So this number isn't terribly useful to me. So we're going to uh, we're going to work with this number to uh, get it to fit the range that we want. But let's take a little bit of a closer look about what this is doing. Um, so in order to do this, we're, we're going to generate 10 random numbers. So let's do this instead of one time, let's do it 10 times. So I'm going to use a simple for loop. So our for int um, i equals 1, while i is less than or equal to 10, uh, i plus plus. And then we'll tab these items in and here we go. Okay, so now let's see what we get in our program if instead of one random number, we're gonna take a look at 10 random numbers. So I'll start this up again. Okay, so here's what we get. Uh, this is a list of pretty random looking numbers. Uh, but if we take a look at the first one, uh, I, I feel like I'm getting a little little sense of deja vu view here. Um, let's run it one more time and take a look at what we've got. And you can see it's, it's actually generating the same sequence of 10 numbers every single time. So yeah, these are really large numbers and I don't think I could use a method to predict what the next numbers are, but uh, starting out with the same number every single time uh, is really not going to be useful for many of our programs. So what's happening here is the random uh, function always starts at a particular number and then just uses a formula to generate a new number afterwards that is impossible to predict. So what we're going to need to do in order to um, make this first number uh, a little bit more random is we're going to use another function that will imagine like uh, spinning a wheel of randomness. So it's going to stop on one of any number of uh, numbers, but it's still going to use the same formula to generate all of its numbers from then on. But it just, the starting point is going to be set a little bit more randomly. Okay. So what we have to do, and we haven't done this much, uh, go all the way up to the top of the program, and we need to build in some functionality here uh, so that our C++ program will be able to access time controls. Uh, so we're gonna do another include here, and it's gonna be called time.h. So it's a header file that includes all of the operations that you would want to use if you were accessing uh, time commands and time controls. Um, so now what I want to do is before I generate random numbers, I'm going to use this command. So s uh, ram. 
and time, and we're going to pick null. Okay, so what's happening with this one is it uses the uh, the current time to set the uh, first random number. So when you hit run on your program, it's going to look at what time it is currently and then use that to set. So instead of, uh, you know, 1804 uh, to 8938, it's going to pick some number that is going to appear random, but it's not actually. So I'm going to run this again. And now our starting number is actually different this time. I'm going to run it again just to verify. And we get yet again another different number. So these times aren't actually random either. Uh, and this is um, based on the idea that, uh, and this might blow your mind, I'm going to just put this as a note here, that uh, no such thing as random numbers. Um, so for those of you who play uh, games and you're, you know, cursing their random number generator, it's actually not um, possible for a computer to create random numbers. Um, what it does instead is it um, creates impossible to predict numbers. So in this case, we had to use time. Uh, other methods will use different ways to set the initial number and then formulas that are so complicated that there's no way to predict the numbers, but they are not in fact random numbers, uh, which is not a thing that exists. Um, so what we're stuck with here though is we've got this list of numbers, but none of them is anywhere close to, you know, a random number from one to 10. So here are the steps that will bring us closer and closer uh, to getting a random number from one to 10. Um, so underneath the loop, we'll uh, create a, another series of um, random numbers. So I'm gonna start this off just so that I can separate it from the first part. So steps to random uh, numbers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at our very basic. So you don't always have to put these, although you usually will, you don't always have to put the results of a random function into a variable. You can uh, display it or throw it into some other function, but I'm just gonna start with this. So our first one is just a random number and I'm gonna run this just to show you what we're looking at uh, in terms of the program. So we're gonna get our, our list of really random numbers and then we're going to slowly whittle this down so that we're uh, getting random numbers from one to 10. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to move this up a little bit so it'll be uh, easier to see. All right. Now, uh, these numbers are great, um, but not super helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our random number that we get and we're going to put it into a repeating system uh, of numbers with 10 digits. So this is an application of something that we've already done is we are going to make a modular system. Uh, so this is used in uh, systems of numbers that you know go from zero up to a value and then back down. Um, and we're gonna use modulus 10. So what it's gonna do is it's going to um, divide the number by 10 and then give us the remainder from that. Uh, so if I run this, we'll see what we get. And you can see my bottom number here is one. So I'm going to run it again and we'll see what we get. Now I get a zero. So wait a second, this isn't giving me a random number from one to 10. Let's take a look at what this is doing. So, um, the way this works is remember, imagine that we had um, 
a number that would be like uh, 450 divided by 10. So what would be the remainder of that? So the remainder would be equal to zero. So that is actually the lowest remainder we can get where the number is actually divisible by this value. Now the highest number that we can get is always uh, one less than this number. So I could have um, 459 divided by 10 would give us a remainder of nine. So this value here, so this is a range from zero to nine. Not quite what we wanted yet. So imagine that we had a, a number line. So this is how we're going to accomplish this. So I've got a number line that goes uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so on. So what is happening now is the result we're getting is anything from 0 to 9. So we're getting the correct number of, of uh, values, but uh, they're not... Uh, they're not overlapping the correct range. So instead of going from zero to nine, I want it to move over and I like want these brackets around one to 10. So if you think about it this way, what I want to do is whatever result I get uh, from this function, I want to add one to it. So like imagine if I had a nine, I want to add one and make it a 10. If I got a zero, I want to add one to it and make it a one. And what it's going to do with the rest of it is like if I had a four, it's going to add one and become a five. So if I want to add one to whatever I get out of this, this is what it's going to look like. So C out, I'm going to get a random number, modulus 10, and I'm going to add one. So now this actually generates a random number from 1 to 10. So this is really useful, uh, but imagine that I had um, had a more complicated range that I wanted to, uh, to accomplish here. Um, so what if I wanted a range from uh, 3 to 7, just for an example? Now, if you want to try and work this out, uh, you know, you can pause the video and do that. Um, but for most of you, uh, I'll, I'll go through this example so that you can kind of use this as a pattern for the, the next couple. So uh, if you want to imagine that I've got my uh, number line here, so I'm going to move down my number line and we'll use the number line to do this, although we'll, we'll get a shortcut in just a second. So, pardon me. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get uh, a range from 3 to 7. So I want to get 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Uh, now it's important that I've got the other example on here because um, what I want to do is make kind of a relationship between these two. So why did I use the number 10 here? So let's count how many numbers are in the range. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have 10 numbers in the range. So this is kind of the range value of our random numbers. So if I was to do this for this example, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So this is actually going to be five. So uh, what I want to do uh, is I want to take a random number and I want to go modulus five. But what I've got here is this again, if I have say the number 35 and I take modulus five, I'm going to get zero as the result. So 
what I want to do is then I want to figure out how many numbers up the number line do I have to push this. So in this case, I want to move it one, two, three values over. So I'm going to go plus three. So this is a range from three to seven. And so this is really great, except for the fact that whenever I want to get a random number range, I don't want to have to pull out a number line and try to figure out, okay, how many digits is this? There's got to be a way to figure out what these formulas uh, should be. And there actually is. So uh, when we're calculating this, the general case, so the general case is going to be a random number. So rand modulus x plus y. Oops. So in this case, x is the range number. So x is going to be our range. So it's kind of how many numbers are included. And we actually have a way of calculating what x is going to be. So think about in the first example, we had 10 numbers. So this, this one's not a great one for visualizing this. So we had from three to seven, and we got as our result five, because it included five numbers. So what we can do is think about this. Seven minus three gives us the range. So seven minus three would give us four uh, because if you would add one, two, three, four to get seven. So what you have to do is you have to take uh, a subtraction. So this is the high number minus the low number. But ima imagine again, seven minus three would be four. It doesn't actually include how many numbers are in this range. So we just have to add one to it. And then the y value uh, is the uh, displacement, um, which is always, so this one's easy to calculate, it's always the low number. So if you want to look at like this, uh, random modulus, now I'm going to use the substitution here for x. X we calculate as the high number minus the low number plus one. And I'll put uh, further parentheses around this. Uh, you know, this is probably the easiest way to visualize this. High minus low plus one plus the low number. So you can use this to figure out any random number range that you want. Uh, so let's try this as, uh, as one example here. Um, we'll get um, a, uh, let's try a range from um, 27 to 101. So we'll do it this way. So if I'm doing this, I want, I'm going to see out random number. Uh, and then I'm going to go modulus and then I'll actually substitute in the values. This is a good way to do this. 101 um, minus 27 plus one, and then outside plus what's the low number? 27. Um, Here we go. Okay, now this is again kind of hard to read. So you always, always want to simplify this uh, to make it more readable. Uh, so I'm going to turn this range number into something uh, more useful. So 121, uh, sorry, 101 minus 27 is 74. We're going to add one to it. So this is 75. Uh, and so our random number range from 27 to 101 is random modulus 75 plus 27. Um, now a little bit of a more challenging one is uh, let's do a range from um, 
Now imagine we had negative 10 to 20. How would we do this? So uh, random modulus. So this is going to, again, be the high number. Now the high number in this one is 20 minus negative 10 plus 1 plus negative 10. Now I'm going to do a lot of work to this to uh, get it to work properly. But what I'm going to do here then is 20 minus negative 10 is the same thing as 20 plus 10. So this value here is 31. And then plus negative 10, well that's just the same thing as minus 10. So what's happening here and think of the, the logic, you know, imagine this was on a number line, the amount of numbers between negative 10 and 20 is 31, because it's not only the 20 on the positive side of zero, it's the negative 10 on the other side of the zero, but it also includes zero. And then imagine that this gave you the value zero, 0 minus 10 would give you negative 10, which is the low number from this range. So this is useful for tons of stuff, and we're going to be using this uh, throughout a lot of the uh, remainder of our programs.